It might sound easy, but turning your 3D printing hobby into a business is actually pretty hard. At 3DQ, we work with all kinds of print farms, from people starting their first Etsy store to print farms with hundreds of 3D printers. In this video, I'll walk through the five stages of running a 3D print farm. We'll go through the blocks and problems that people commonly face, and I'll give you some ways to get past them. No matter where you are on your 3D printing journey, this video will equip you with the tools and knowledge you need to get your 3D printing business to the next level. One, the startup model. Does your 3D printing business actually make money? Some print farms unfortunately operate at a loss despite their attempts to be profitable. This tends to happen for a few reasons. Maybe they lack a cohesive business model, maybe they're putting their products at really low prices just to gain some traction, or maybe they're jumping around from idea to idea just trying to find something that works. When you're just starting out, you might need to spend a little bit more than you're making in order to earn your first customers, but losing money week by week is not sustainable. To avoid becoming a perpetual startup, it's important to find a problem that you can solve with passion. When you're looking for a business idea, don't just look around on Etsy and print whatever seems to be popular. That's a recipe for disaster because competition is fierce and it's a race to the bottom. Instead, look for product ideas that solve a problem within a specific niche, and ideally something that you're actually personally interested in. It's really hard to make a business out of something that you have no passion for. And don't underestimate the value of what you're doing. You're gonna to need to price your products high enough that you're fairly compensated for the value you're providing. Two, the hobby model. When does it make sense to turn your 3D printing hobby into a business? A hobbyist print farm is a 3D printing operation that's more focused on 3D printing than business. Hobbyists at this stage tend to use their skills and experience to make just enough money to fund their next 3D printer. Hobbyists will charge fairly for their goods and services, but they really only tend to make enough to cover the cost of equipment and materials. If you're considering turning your 3D printing hobby into a business, it's important to be aware of some common pitfalls. Hobbyists are often too focused on the technology and they spend too much time tinkering with their printers. They will tend to prematurely optimize things like print speed and part design. Hobbyists also tend to spend too much time working on an idea before doing any kind of market research. But there are situations where a hobbyist print farm makes sense. If you're simply looking for a way to fund your 3D printing addiction, then a hobbyist print farm can be a fun and fulfilling way to do it. The key is to be clear about your goals. Are you more interested in running 3D printers or do you actually want to grow a business? Answering that question can help guide your decisions as to what operation you want to run. Three, the buy a job 3D printing business. Do you have a profitable 3D printing business or are you just buying yourself a job? A buy a job 3D printing business is profitable, but only just. Despite investing thousands of dollars in equipment and materials, the amount of money that you're bringing home at the end of the day is about equivalent to a nine to five job. And that's not all too bad. You're working for yourself, so at least that means your boss is pretty cool. If you're at this stage of running a print farm, then it means you're on the right track to building a good business, but there are still some big inefficiencies holding you back. A lot of print farms come to us at this stage because they're frustrated that they aren't able to grow easily and they're looking for a better way. The best advice I can give is even though you're super busy, try to force yourself to spend a little bit of time every day making your business just 1% more efficient. One way to do this is by stepping back and 80-20ing your business, and this just means looking for all the tasks that don't add value. The very DIY mindset that has gotten you this far is now going to start holding you back, so you need to think about ways that you can eliminate, automate, and delegate tasks within your business. An example of elimination is offering fewer product variants to reduce complexity. For automation, you could reduce the number of interruptions in your day by setting some 3D printers up with auto-ejection. And for delegation, you could consider using ready-made business tools instead of building your own from scratch. By focusing your efforts on making your farm more efficient, you'll become less busy and you'll also make more money, so this will get you to the next level. Four, the lifestyle 3D printing business. Does a 3D printing business support your ideal lifestyle? A lifestyle business is profitable to the point where it supports your ideal lifestyle, but no more than that. To identify whether you have a lifestyle business, look for key indicators such as good profit margins, being well known within a profitable niche, having high value recurring customers, and potentially selling to other businesses. Congratulations if you're at this point. You can sit back, relax, and enjoy what you've created. And if you don't want to build a 3D printing empire, well, you don't have to. If you're ambitious and you want to keep growing, you'll need to focus on how you're going to scale. As you add more printers, hire more employees, and add more products, the complexity of your operation will increase. That means it's important to build systems that allow you to scale up without adding unnecessary complexity. You might need to rework the processes you already have in place, or you might need to make some drastic changes in your business to overcome some deeply rooted bottlenecks. Five, the scalable 3D printing business. 
3D printers can literally print money, but getting there isn't easy. A scalable business is the pinnacle of success in the world of 3D print farming. It represents the ultimate goal of profitability, growth, and sustainability. It's scalable because you now have established systems, and so the path to growth is clear. When you're at this point, you're also making a positive impact on society by creating job opportunities and supporting other businesses. If you're at this point, you have great profit margins and you're selling a lot while keeping expenses low. If you're selling to individuals, then you've automated your sales funnel. If you're selling to other businesses, you're selling in bulk. Or maybe you're selling high value niche items that demand top dollar. Your print farm is optimized, efficient, and automated. You focus on preventing issues rather than responding to them. And finally, every day, you try to make your print farm just 1% better. At this point, all you can do is continue to scale, innovate, and optimize. As a leader in the additive manufacturing movement, you now have a unique opportunity to help the community. Consider providing mentorship to other entrepreneurs or partnering with other businesses. And through all of this, don't forget about the passion that got you here in the first place. Today we covered five different stages of running a 3D printing business. Startup print farms lose money over time, so they need to find a product or service that actually makes money. Hobbyist print farms tend to be more interested in 3D printing than running a business. Buy a job print farms can find success by stepping back using the 80-20 principle to optimize their print farm. A lifestyle 3D printing business is sustainable and has the potential for growth. If you want to scale it up, you might have to make some drastic changes to overcome deeply rooted bottlenecks. The scalable 3D printing business is not just scalable, but very profitable and very efficient. They also make a positive impact on society by giving back to the community. If you're looking for advice on your specific print farm, check the description for an invitation to our Discord server and our subreddit. And if you're stuck at any of these stages and unable to scale, then that's exactly why we created AutoFarm 3D. Feel free to check it out, it's linked below in the description, or message us on Discord if you want to know if it's something that could benefit you. If there's any tips I missed that you think would be helpful for other 3D printing businesses, please leave them down below in the comment section. And there you have it, the five stages of running a 3D printing business. Keep innovating and keep growing your print farm. I'll see you in the next video.